also, Lord, bless the Sunday school lesson. Bless our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning. And uh, we are still coming from our God's Word for Life Adult Sunday School Material Volume 1. And uh, we are in series 2 of God, uh, of God is Our Refuge. Today's date is July the 17th, year 2022, and we are in Lesson 2 of Series 2. And uh, the lesson entitled is called Bless the Lord at All Times. And the lesson's big idea is, I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen? And our focus first comes from the book of the Psalms, the 34th chapter, and the first verse, and this is the King James Version. It says, uh, a psalm of David, when he, turned, when, he, when he changed his behavior before Amalek, who drove him away, and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue. Amen. Our lesson text comes from the first book of Samuel, also known as the first book of the King, the first book of Samuel, from the first chapter, beginning at the 10th verse, the, 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 beginning at the 10th to the 15th verse, and also the second, the first uh, book of Samuel, the 22nd uh, chapter, from the first to the 5th verse, and also our last reading will be from the book of Psalms 34 and 1. May we all stand as it, our, as it is our custom for our response to reading. As it is, I'll read the first verse, you read the second verse, we'll read the last verse in concert. Amen? And our uh, lesson text is in our reading, uh, 1 Samuel, 22nd chapter, 10th verse. And David arose and fled that day uh, for fear of Saul and went to Asher, the king of Gath. Return to make it, said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did not they sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul is slain his thousands, and David is ten thousand? And David laid out these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Asher, the, Ash, the, Asher, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands. Scrabbled on the floors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon the earth. And then asked unto his servant, Lo, ye see, the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen? Have ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? David therefore departed thence and escaped to the to the cave of Aldur, is that right? Adula. And when his brother and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. There were with him about four hundred men. And David went up thence to Massap of Moab, and said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth, and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hall. And the prophet of, and the prophet of Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hope, in the hold, depart and get, get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came unto the into the forest of heaven. All together, Psalm of David, Psalm of David when, he when he changed his behavior, his behavior before for Hanashim, who drove him away and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. So let me see that. It says, for as long as David could remember, our lesson connection is, for as long as David could remember, uh, he always loved to praise the Lord. During the countless hours he had, he had spent alone, 
uh, keeping and protecting his father's sheep. David had come to know the joy of the joy of God's presence and uh, joy of God's presence and the thrill of God's power. Yeah. David's experience uh, with God in those lonely fields had made him a worshiper. Yep. One day while David was on was out in the field, a messenger arrived, come at once, saw the prophet is calling for you. So I mean, Samuel the prophet is calling for you. Samuel called for him. David could hardly believe his, his, his ears. And when David arrived, the unthinkable happened. So Samuel anointed David to be the next king of Israel. A shepherd would be a king. It took a while for the shock to wear off. But later when David was finally alone, he praised God for such a blessing and such an honor. Time passed, and then another messenger came to David. This time it was it was a messenger from the king. King Saul commanded commands you to come at once to his court to play your lyre for him. King Saul called him, called, calling for him. How could it be? A lonely shepherd would now be a court musician and one step closer to the throne. David praised the Lord for such a such favor on his life. David continued to be faithful. David continued to be faithfully serving his father and his team. But then his father's task took him to a village in Elar. He went to take food to his brothers, who were soldiers in Saul's form. But David heard a Philistine giant boasting and blaspheming, and God stirred up David's uh, fighting spirit. With the blessing of his king, David took up his sling and fired smooth stone and ran towards the giant to do battle. To the shock of to the shock, to the shock of the other soldiers, David triumphed over the great Philistine boy, Philistine warrior. Boy, oh how David praised God yet again for his power and his presence. But but how but uh, David now David, David had known what it was like to praise God on the way back home. Uh, David had known what it was like to be to, to praise God, but on the way back home. Slaying your life, he learned what it was like to be praised. His youth heart, his youth, his young heart thumped loudly with pride when he heard the women singing his praise. At the moment of uh, at the moment of triumph, however, he never could have imagined he had made a he had just made an enemy more lethal than the than Goliath. And facing the this new enemy and the afflictions that would follow. Uh, follow David would uh, would learn David would learn some, uh, something about God and His faithfulness, and he would learn something about praising God, about praise. David had always praised God in good times. He would now learn to praise God at all times, even in bad. Minister Allen. Sometimes trials, sometimes uh, a lot of difficulties, 
Amen. And then the people that God places in their lives helps to uh, develop them. Amen. Uh, sometimes those leaders can be uh, uh, tough. Yeah. Uh, as we look at this story, uh, the Lord put Saul in David's life. Mm -hmm. And he helped to develop David. Amen. And so, amen, this story picks up. about a young man who was minding his own business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And yeah. what he was doing was he was serving his father. Yeah. Amen. Being the king was at least a date on, of, of things on David's to-do list. Yeah. David's focus was simply, amen, to take care of his daddy's sheep. That was David's focus. David had no idea as to what would come in the future. He was just a faithful, he was just faithful to the responsibilities given to him by his father. Amen. While everyone was having a blast in the house, he was out late at night keeping the sheep because they were his responsibility. Yeah. Amen. He was not making an appeal to be on the throne. He was just a young man with a passion to care for and to serve his father. Yeah. Amen. What a man. What a man. I uh, really appreciate David's story. Sorry, I'm just going to talk and uh, eventually I'll get out of the way this morning. But I really appreciate David's story because I see the different stages of his life that at various times of my life it actually ministered. And, of course, it will continue to minister and impact my life personally. Would you say amen to that? Amen. Praise God. What, what was unique about this, David, was, was he spent time developing the things that, that the Lord gifted him with. Yeah. Amen. I mean, no, David was skilled at slinging stones. Mm. Yeah. Yes, he was. Amen. Actually, the Benjamites... Uh, were actually the ones that were, uh, some of them in their tribe, they were uh, left-handed, and they slain stones. And yeah. uh, I don't have a verse of scripture here, but 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 they were really good. They could, amen. In fact, they would probably be, and is David a, a modern-day sniper? Right. Praise God. With just the stone. They, they slain stones, they guarantee you that they were going to hit you. Praise God. Amen. And there was damage that was done. Amen. But not only was he skilled at slinging stones, but he could also play music with the best of them. Yeah. Amen. And David spent his time, amen, honing in on the things that God actually placed in his life. Amen. He wasn't trying to be anybody else. He was trying to do what God had anointed him to do. And this is one of the things that blesses me. David actually did develop his craft. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. He used and developed what God gave him. Yeah. Truth be told, we will never be good at trying to be someone or something else. Yeah. God never created us to be someone or something else. Come on, look at somebody and say, he created you to be the best you. He created you to be Thank the, the best Lord for that. Amen. And so we must spend time focusing and developing ourselves and allowing God to work through the unique individuals he made us to be. Isn't that right? That's right. Amen. Ain't no sense of, 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 of everybody trying to be like Mike. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was when I was coming up. I wanted to be like Mike. Yes. I, I had to fade away. I had to cross, actually my handles might have been a little better than mine. <laughs> yeah, but ain't no sense of everybody. We can compliment him on his game, but, but, but you, uh, who you are uh, comes because that is what God calls you to be. Isn't that right? The scripture is true. Proverbs 18 and 16 says, a man's gift make room for him that's right, that's right. and bring it him before great men. David's gift brought him into the king's palace. While David was there, he didn't forget who he was and what he was accustomed to. Amen. David had a heart 
to serve. Yes, he did. Amen. He faithfully served his father as well as King Saul. Yes. Amen. And, and you know, we, we do know this story all too well, right? Yeah. Amen. We know this story all too well. But David was sent, amen, one day to serve his brothers. And when he got there, he heard some uncircumcised Philistine putting his mouth on the people of God. Amen. Now, now it, it's, it's natural, actually, for David to defend against things that put their mouth on God's sheep. It's yeah. natural for David. Amen. Ask, go ahead. Go, go. You might not get to, but go ask the lion. Amen. Go ask the bear. Right. And with confidence, this young man sprung into action. Praise God. Who, who is? Who is this uh, uncircumcised Philistine? Amen. David wasn't afraid. Amen. With confidence in his God, David took care of what people feared. This became a problem because God had anointed David and gave him favor. This young man had victory after victory. He had so much victory that it exceeded the victories of King Saul. Amen. And this started the song that we actually uh, read and picked up just a little bit. And it came to pass, 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 6, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing, dancing to meet King Saul with tablets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the woman answered one another as they played and said, Saul had slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. Amen. And Saul was very wroth, and the slain displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousand, and to me only have they ascribed but thousands. What else is going to happen here? Is he just, is he going to take my kingdom? Right? Saul got jealous because they gave David more victories than him. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, there's no real reason for King Saul to be jealous because they were on the same team. Yep. Isn't that right? They're on the same team. How I many of you feel like this? I don't care who gets the credit as long. That's right, that's right, preacher. Anybody feel like that? I just want to win. Yep, that's right. Come on. I I, I just want to win. Amen. Uh, the fact is, there's a whole lot of people that want to be superstars. Yep. Amen. But but superstars, amen, need a team. Praise God. I know I made mention of Michael Jordan, but he couldn't win those championships without Scottie Pippen, without uh, Horace Grant, without, come on, Dennis Rockman, without Bill Cartwright, without John Pat. He, could, he had to have a team. Amen. Because he wasn't on all the time. I wish I had some help here. Yes. Praise God. And that, that, the, the, the other problem is some people fail to realize that, that this it is not an individual game. Right. Right? Amen. It, it takes everybody to win, amen, this game. David is serving Saul, and he's having great success doing it. Yeah. But Saul is so insecure and ate up with so much pride, he became jealous. Praise God. Amen. David had 10,000, and Saul only had 1,000. The truth of the matter is, David can't have 10,000 without Saul's 1,000. Praise God. Yep. Go ahead, go ahead. David needed Saul's thousands. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. So what pushed Saul to this kind of hatred, bitter response to David, amen, somebody shouted, was fear. 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 He had lost the kingdom due to his disobedience, and God was raising up another, but Saul didn't trust the plan and wanted to continue to control and his fear caused him to try to kill the person he actually asked to come and help him. Yep. And right? David was doing his usual thing. And Saul began to entertain the wrong spirit and grab the javelin. 
and with the intent. His intent was simply, this all right this morning, his intent was simply to nail David to the wall. Amen. Because he hated David simply because he had more victories than him. Yeah. And sad. And sad to see so much competition and competitiveness, even, amen, you, you know I said it, I am a competitive guy. I told you that's why I don't go play golf, praise God. I'm going to go one day, though. Amen. But 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 uh, 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 it's sad to see the, the how people oftentimes try to up one another in the kingdom of God. Amen. That, that's not the will of God. Amen. We really are on the same team. Praise the Lord. And if you do good, that means I do good. That means we all do good. And everybody wins. Isn't that right? Amen. How many want to win? Amen. Amen. And being part of a body, you actually win. Look at somebody say together. together. Amen. Praise God. So, amen. Your success is my success. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, what amazes me about this story was David, uh, uh, after the first time he threw a javelin at him, <laughs> David went back. Come on now. Now how many of us, after someone threw a javelin, we know the intent was not to miss. We know the intent was to take us out. Praise God. How many of us would have went back to the king's palace? I, I want to see your hands. I, I don't see no hands. Come on now. <laughs> I don't see no hands. David went back and did what he always did. David was faithful. He was a servant. He served. And he did it again. And he started playing his music. Amen. One more time trying to serve the king. Praise God. And the king began to entertain again. Amen. An, an evil spirit. Praise God. And this time he tried his best to miss. The beautiful thing, I may have said it already, is David didn't pick that javelin up and throw it back at the king. David was such a skilled thrower, he wouldn't have missed the king. Yep. 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 He would have got him, praise God. Amen. And so, amen, uh, thank God that David is teaching us how to respond to difficult situations. Praise God. When people strike at you, don't strike back. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The, the Lord wants to help us. Amen. Because the truth of the matter is, as I said in the opening statements, amen, that 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 we are, we God is trying his best to develop good people. Amen. And a lot of times our development comes, amen, from, from how, amen, we respond to situations like this. Correct. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Who we become comes through. Thank God for good leadership. And I'm thankful for Bishop. I'm thankful, amen, for the men that the Lord had placed in our lives to kind of help develop us and to kind of help push us over, amen, when we're not, when we're going the wrong way and to kind of tap us back in. Praise God. But there are times when your trials and your situations, the proper response to your situations and the proper response to your trial, amen, it's, 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 it's the focus of this lesson. Amen. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise God. He made a conscious decision. Praise God. To bless God. How did he bless God in this particular one? In the beginning, he didn't throw the javelin back. Right. Praise God. A lot of times blessing God, amen, is just simply keeping your cool and getting out of the way, ducking sometimes, but not picking the stone back up and throwing it back because I, Come on, I represent him. Anybody represent the Lord here today? Amen. I represent him. Hallelujah. And because I represent him, I'm not going to throw back at you what you throwing at me. Somebody help me. Hallelujah. Because I'm in another kingdom, right? Amen. I'm not, I'm, I'm not of this world. I am in another kingdom. And because I'm in another kingdom, amen, I'm going to represent the Lord good. Praise the Lord. If David can taste and see how the Lord is good, then I think Saul needs to see the, uh, the reality that the Lord is good. Amen. Praise God. So Saul got 
got so bad at this. Saul got bad at this. He hated David so bad that those that protected David, that supported David, amen, became Saul's enemy. Man, what was so sad about it was, amen, they, uh, 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 Saul picked up a javelin to kill his own son. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. 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 Jealousy, the Bible said, is as cruel as the grave. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, need to help us not to become jealous of one another. Right. Amen. Because it'll cause you to do things that, that, amen, we shouldn't be doing. Jonathan, I thank God. Anybody thank God for real friends? Jonathan was a real friend to David. Amen. And I thank God for Jonathan. Yes. Everybody needs a Jonathan yes. in their lives. Yes. Amen. Back, back coming up. Amen. In the streets, we I thought I had some, but they really wasn't. Amen. They they ride or die with me. Amen. Right on down into the penitentiary. He should have been saying, no, let's not do that, man. But no, we were so nutty that we would follow each other right on off the cliff. I wish you had some help. Yes, man, but a real Jonathan would tell you, hey, I'm going to protect you. A real Jonathan will, will really try to help you out. Amen. And Jonathan supported David. Amen. When it was, according to them, amen, Jonathan was really the next to the throne. Yeah. But not the plan of God. Plan of God was David. I wish I had it. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Jonathan saw that and supported that. Praise God. Amen. Even when it caused friction with others, because right is right. Right. And wrong is wrong. Come on now. Does this make any sense here? Yeah. Yes. This led David to Gath. And and as he was running, he really didn't have any idea of uh, how he was portrayed in the eyes of those outside of Israel. Amen. So David had no idea how they viewed him. They they recognized who this fellow was. Yes. David became very popular. Yeah. Amen. David, he wasn't trying to. He was just serving the Lord yeah. while serving the king. Amen. And he became very popular. Amen. And uh, David uh, 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 went down to Gad. And uh, uh, they recognized him. They realized, uh-oh, this is the one that, that uh, uh, he's a terrorizer. Yeah. Yeah. David, this is the one, he's a terrorizer. And uh, uh, David thought they were going to take him out. Yeah. And, and David did what some folks do today when they commit crimes. Yeah. Plead insanity. Yeah. 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 What he did. The Bible called it mad. But David went insane. And he acted like he was insane. Started scratching on the door, started spitting. Amen. Let spit run down. And they looked at him and said, Man, I want this dude in my house. Don't bring him to my house. But you don't bring him to my house. I mean, like crazy people coming to your house. They ain't going to help me here today. Amen. He said, I don't want him at my house. Send him on. Amen. And thank God. The truth of the matter is, God was showing up for David. Yes. Praise God. God was helping David. And although David did what little he could, amen, God stepped in, amen, and delivered him, amen, from uh, Akish. I think that's his name, Akish. Amen. And David fled from him. Amen. And uh, even though he acted like he was crazy, David understood. How many of us know this? Yeah. That his help did not come from his own abilities. Yeah. His help did not come from his own talents. Yeah. His help actually came from God. Amen. I thank God. Hallelujah. Because I, I don't know about you, but there are a lot of times, amen, more times than not, especially now today, that I realize I don't have this thing under control. I don't have this thing all together. Amen. I really 
have to trust and lean on God. I'm going to do the best I can with what I have. I wish I had help. I'm going to do the best I can with my finances. I'm going to do the best I can with the brethren, with sisters, amen, in the body of Christ. I'm going to do the best I can with the stuff that the Lord gives me. But the reality is I need help from God. Amen. Amen. There are decisions that I need to make that I cannot make them on my I'm just not smart enough. Amen. I just don't have it all together. Praise God. Amen. The Lord has to step in and has to give direction. That's why, help me Lord, when I come to the house of God, I'm listening carefully for the word of the Lord. When, I, when I'm in prayer and in devotion, I'm listening carefully for the word of the Lord because I don't want to get this thing wrong. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. David trusted in God. Amen. It did not alleviate any effort on his part. Right. He still, amen, had to do his part. I'm not telling us to go out and act crazy. <laughs> Let drool come down from you. I'm saying that crazy, but I am, I am saying that. Uh, faith causes us to react and to respond and to do certain things. Amen. Praise God to help the Lord. Amen. Well, not to help the Lord, but to participate yeah. with God. Yeah. Amen. God delivered David from a kiss, and he too will deliver you Come on now. from your enemy. Would you say amen? Amen. Praise amen. God. And and uh, uh, so we got to trust God to deliver us from our enemy. And the truth of the matter is, I'm not just talking about um, uh, our bills being paid, although he'll help us pay our bills. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes, he will. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yes, he will. Make a way. I'm talking about that that python mm -hmm. that, that's doing its best to suffocate the life out of you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Now, 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 he could see the fact that you don't have enough money to pay your bills. Uh -huh. yeah. He could see the fact that even in that, your children are acting funny. He can see the fact that when you go to work or don't even have work or whatever the case may be, amen, all of those things are seeming to be to, to come in and, and suffocate the life right out of you. And that old that old that old python is doing its very best to, amen, suck whatever you have gained from God right out of you. He's doing its very best, praise God. To make sure that somehow I can cause a little confusion. Life happens, right? Uh -huh. It does. Sometimes it just don't. Amen. Sometimes we do have more bills than money. Life happens. Praise God. Sometimes, and remember last week when they were talking about the boss on the job. Amen. Just want to be mean just because they think they can. Sometimes life just happens. Praise God. Amen. Uh, but the enemy does his best to utilize all of those things to create confusion in your life and cause you just to step aside just a little bit. The Bible said he is like a lion. Amen. He's, he's like a lion. How many of you know that lions do their best to create enough confusion to cause the hurt when they're hungry? When they're hungry and they're ready to eat, I don't care if they see a big old herd of of bulls, praise God. What they're going to do is create enough confusion just to get the weak one separated, amen, from the very thing that's protecting him. And all they need is just a little bit of room. Man, that's why the scripture says neither give place to the devil. Right. Amen. And, and the truth of the matter is the word picture there is simply open up the door enough to where his foot can get inside the door. That's all he needs. I wish I had a little help yes. here today. Amen. I, 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 the Bible tells us in 1 Peter, it says to what? Be sober. Uh -huh. It said to be vigilant. Be vigilant. Uh -huh. Amen. Because you have an adversary. If you did not know it. Amen. You have an adversary. Uh -huh. And it's not your brother. Come on now. And it's not your sister. Go ahead. And it's not your mama or your daddy. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Amen. And and really, it ain't even the co-worker. Well, right. The 
Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. Amen. There is an adversary that is out to destroy us. David, before you ever step into your calling, I want you to know that I want to do my very best to take you out. That's the adversary. That's his goal. Amen. Praise God. He is as a roaring lion walking about seeking. He's, he, he'll wait on you. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, sir. You step back. He'll wait on you. He'll wait just he'll give you enough to confuse you and wait till you separate. Till he'll wait on you. He's smart. <laughs> Might tell you he's a dummy. He's not a dummy. That dude went from a serpent to a dragon. He ain't no dummy. <laughs> he'll wait on you. And that is the, the truth. Amen. The adversary is, is seeking to devour you. Amen. But we do have a better, uh, we have a, a, a tremendous reality. Psalms 37 and verse, Psalms 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The Lord sets up, uh, uh, sets up and guards us from the enemy of our soul. Amen. How I many know God will deliver you? Yes, he will. Praise God. But our job is to resist the devil. Somebody say resist the devil. Resist Amen. I believe it's James chapter 4. I believe it's James 4 and 7 where it says resist the devil. Amen. And he'll flee. But before it says that, I believe it says submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Praise God. You know how to get him? You know how to resist him? By submitting to God. Praise God. Amen. It wasn't long before David was joined by people who were not Saul's elite. Yes. Amen. And these were people like who were struggling. Not only was David going through, he picked up 400 other people that was going through. <laughs> that was going through. I like that. Uh -huh. So he got 401 problems. Praise God. What was amazing is that David took this band of misfits uh -huh. and trained them to become giant killers. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. It was just like me. Uh -huh. They yeah. started as people that were struggling, uh -huh. but they became giant killers. Uh -huh. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Can you imagine, though? The position that David was in. David didn't anoint himself king. Said it earlier. He was he was minding his own business. Serving faithfully. And now, now, as we read it in our text, he's running for his life. It had to be discouraging. It had to be frustrating. Yeah. He's trying to find safety in a place outside the church. Can I tell you, there is no safety outside the church. Amen. There is no safety. The safest place to be is in the church. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Praise God. Even if someone in the church is trying to kill you, right. it's still the safest place. Uh, right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Praise God. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about a time where Amen. Somebody actually was in the same congregation. Amen. Was doing their dead level best. I'm not nothing. I'm not nothing special. Praise God. Right. But they were doing their dead level best. Praise the Lord. I'm just thinking about that time. Amen. Where I wasn't leaving the church because there was. Come on now. Wasn't going nowhere. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
I wasn't leaving the church because I had some folks that was out to get me in the church. I wasn't leaving the church. Amen. We, we, we understand this. And you go to the store and there are people out there that act just as crazy as people in the church, but you keep going to the store. You still buy groceries at the same store they talked about you, at the same store they did you back, at the same store you still buy groceries at that store. Listen, I'm not leaving this thing. There's nothing better than this church. There's nothing better than the house of God. Why? Because in the house of God, we're going to find the words of eternal life. Praise God. In the house of God, we're going to find the deliverance that we need. In, the, in fact, thank God. Oh, God have mercy. Thank God for Judas. Thank God for your brother or sister that actually helps to put you on the cross. Thank God. And Jesus had a Judas. And Judas was there to help him, amen, to get the Pentecost. And help me, God. Judas was there to help him. If he didn't go to that cross, amen. somebody help me here today. I thank God for Judas. Thank God for the kiss that Judas placed on his, on his cheek. Anybody thankful here today? Because it makes us who we are. Come on now. I'm not trying to preach here. I'm just, I'm just thankful. Praise God. Amen. Uh, sometimes it happens with people with that are closest to you. I, I remember the one that I trust. I, I literally trust my life with them in their hand. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. It's true. And I. And it was like, it was like sometimes, sometimes they were for me. Yep. Sometimes they did everything they could, seems like, to be against me. Yeah. Yeah. And then we coming up, we call them two-faced or some timing. Yep. Sometimes. Yep. And it was, I, I, I can tell you, I was, I was, I was so discouraged and, and so frustrated, and here there's a call of God that was that was lingering, Amen, on my life, and and I felt like, man, I, at least I thought I ought to have the support. Yeah. This okay? I'm trying to quit. Oh, glory. It's good. At least. And I I remember we didn't have a Sunday night church service, so uh, I remember going to another church Sunday night. I wasn't leaving the church. I just went to another church. I was see I needed a word from God. Yeah. Mm. And that preacher, that preacher told his congregation, he said, an evangelist is coming. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm feeling in my spirit. That's what God called me to do then. He said, an evangelist is coming. And when he comes, he's coming with a word from the Lord. I guarantee you he wasn't expecting me. I didn't expect to have a word from God. I'm distressed. I'm frustrated. I need a word from the Lord myself. And I remember, I'm and I actually sat in the back. I remember him coming down and saying, hey man, I believe you got a word for us. I said, no, I don't. <laughs> I testified, though. I got up and testified and, and ended up preaching. And what the Lord was doing for me, I don't think it was for them, it was more for me, was saying, I got you. That was a word from the Lord that helped me, amen, to continue on the next. Come on, anybody ever needed a word from the Lord? I, 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 come on, anybody ever needed David needed to hear the voice of God. Yes, he did. David needed to hear the voice of God. Amen. And God spoke to him by sending a prophet where exactly where God will meet you where you are. Right. Yeah. Is this all right here tonight? Today? God will, come on, you, you'll feel better when you get a word from God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It'll lift your spirit. It'll lift your spirit when you get a word from God, and, and it'll help you. Praise the Lord, Amen. Because because our lesson teaches us that David learned how, Amen, not only to praise God in the good times, 
Yeah. David learned how to praise God in the bad times. Hallelujah. David learned, he said, I will bless the Lord. Yeah. I am making a effort in the difficult times of my life to bless the Lord. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, it, it's not good enough, God, just to be good to me. And I see, amen, the roses and, and all the beautiful things. But can you bless God when you don't see roses and all you see is thorns? Hallelujah. David learned how to bless the Lord in the midst of his thorns. Come on. Is there anybody in this Sunday school that said, praise God? Amen. Then maybe you got thorns in your life. Hold on. Roses is coming. Amen. Just bless the Lord in the middle of the thorns. Just hold on. Amen. Let it take its time. Sooner or later, you're going to be hurt. Come on. What you doing? Would you just bless him in the Sunday school lesson? Come on. Bless the Lord this morning. Amen. I better quit. There's none like hearing the voice of God when we are faced with fear, frustration, and disappointment. Truth can stabilize you. It can help you to manage negative feelings because, because faith comes by hearing. Come on. Faith comes by hearing. Negative emotions can isolate you, can create things in your mind. That is just not true. Mm. And you believe it. Mm. But when you come to the house of God and the preacher reads your mail, somebody say, Thank the Lord, Thank the Lord. for the preacher. Lord. Amen. Amen. The best thing we can do, oh, there's so much. Best thing we can do, amen, is learn how to give God praise. Amen. amen. In difficult times. Amen. amen. I remember when my brother. Past, uh, and uh, she's watching. I don't know, but uh, it was a difficult time oh, yeah. uh, for me. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because I do remember that phone call. I may have said it here before, but I think it was about four in the morning, and she she called him and saying, "Just pray the prayer of faith," and she's screaming, "So you can raise him from the dead." And we don't have that. I mean. God is in control of all of this. Amen. And uh, I remember how difficult it was. But uh, I never learned, I never stopped praising God. Yeah. I learned how to praise God in some of the most difficult times. You know, God's got a good track record. You know, we can trust the Lord. Yep. Amen. Right? We, we can trust God in the hard times. Because he's been good to you, even when you didn't deserve it. He That's showed right. up in times. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry, mm. and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their trouble. Mm -hmm. The Lord is nigh unto them yeah. that are of a broken heart, and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions. Of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him out of them all. Every one of them. Every one of them. Would you lift your hands and would you just love the Lord for just a moment as we transition? The bishop takes it from here. Bless the Lord at all times. Just because you get saved doesn't mean that you ain't going to suffer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you look at David's life and what he went through, 
he could see someone in biology of Christ. Mm -hmm. He had victory himself. You know, he was even the men was willing to stone him. Yeah. Men who he trained. Mm -hmm. He came. Sometimes that David messed up. Yes. Amen. But when we think in terms of uh, his humanity, he wasn't God manifested in the flesh. Amen. Amen. And uh, Christ was perfect. Everything yeah. He done right. Praise God. Amen. But most of David's life, Jesus, he done things right. That's why the Lord picked him yeah. to actually give us even the songs and to give us a more uh, a depth understanding of doing what's right even in the midst of difficulty. That's right, amen. That's right. Doing the right thing in difficult yeah. times. You look at his his life, praise God. Even down when he messed up. Yeah. He got back on track. Yeah. He repented. Praise God. Yeah. And when he messed up that act, God convicted him of it. Yeah. Even before the preacher got to him. Yes. David knew he was wrong. He knew he was wrong. You know, because he never lost sight of having a heartbeat for God. Yeah. And that's so important. He meant to realize that the example that David set for 